Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, today we have almost uh, it's the last technical lecture, and after that we have only one lecture, which is on the future perspectives of uh, soil research. So, you know, so that is kind of a general lecture uh, that what kind of a research can be uh, executed in the future, and what are the real issues nowadays, and what is the trend in the uh, research. Uh, but before, uh, uh, during this lecture, we'll talk about uh, soil resilience, so which is very important uh, when we talk about the sustainability of a soil or to enhance the quality uh, for a long period of time or long -term, term quality enhancement. So there are a lot of terms which are being used uh, for soil quality and sustainability. And the soil resilience is a, a very wider term which is also used for that. And uh, whatever we will discuss in this lecture, so we have almost covered everything, uh, every aspect has been touched, but we have just arranged in, in a manner that we can understand that what is actually the soil resilience is and how can we improve it and what are the factors affecting on that. Uh, other than uh, food, food, fuel, fiber, and uh, building materials, uh, the soil has also a lot of uses, uh, which also emphasize to talk about the resilience. Uh, for example, we are using uh, soil uh, for environmental regulation through buffering, biochemical transformation, bioremediation. Uh, we are using it for biomass uh, production for industrial use. Uh, the biomass is used for energy purpose or for oil or many other things. Uh, then we have a large uh, gene pool, uh, which we have here in the soil. Uh, uh, this is actually repetition. The gene pool is also here. Uh, we have a large gene pool here, and then we have also engineering and military uses of the, of, uh, the soils. So what about the gene pool, which because we have a microbial population in the soil, a lot of microbes they are in the soil, and this is a kind of a gene pool for us. And, uh, uh, and those microbial population are, of course, a very important part of uh, soil. So when we talk about soil resilience or soil health, uh, aesthetic and cultural uses and uh, archaeological functions, uh, so these are also a part of that. So coming towards the resilience, uh, resilience is an ecological concept that involves several attributes governing responses to disturbance or stress. So basically, this is a concept which has various attributes to describe the response of the soil when it is under disturbance or under stress. Uh, before going to the next kind of the definition of resilience, we must know that there are various terms which are used for that. So resilience, you can say that the ability to resist change or to recover to the initial state. So this is the best to recover to the initial state of the soil, the basic soil uh, uh, standard which we have. Uh, resistance, the ability to resist displacement from the antecedent, uh, the original state, uh, then elasticity is the rate of recovery, that how the soil is recovered when it's disturbed, amplitude, the range of change in a prop property from which recovery is possible. So because uh, uh, there is a certain limits that up to this extent we can enhance or we can have the resilience or the soil has the resilience or has the ability to recover when we have a certain uh, level of disturbance. If we go beyond that, so we will not be able to see that recovery 
at full potential. Uh, hysteresis is also a term which is used while describing soil resilience. The divergence in the recovery path are better. So, so the soil is, has been disturbed by some pressure, stress, uh, disturbance, uh, and it's coming back to original uh, status, but the path is different. So maybe for some period of time, it may have some other characteristics which may also be negative. So because the path is not same, we, for example, we are growing crops, uh, that is the one cultivating the soil, uh, and we have a, a, a straight path on which we are going, and the soil is, uh, in the end, the soil is disturbed from the original or antecedent stage, state. Uh, but when the soil is coming back, it's recovering, so it's, it's not using the same path. It's using the different paths. So maybe if it's going uh, in, in a straight line, so it may come uh, like this. It may come like this. So that can be uh, 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 described as hysteresis. Uh, then we have variability. The, the difference in the new versus the antecedent state. So this is basically the uh, when your soil is disturbed and then after that it's uh, recovered through its uh, resilience characteristics and it is not coming toward the original stage exactly. So there may be some difference. Uh, for example, if the soil has a 10 points and we have disturbed to uh, seven points, and uh, now the soil is recovering toward 10 points again, but it is not coming exactly to the 10 points, it's 9.5. And then the 0 0.5, that is the kind of malleability that when the soil is recovered, it has a difference from the original state. So, uh, the several uh, ecological terms are used uh, we have already discussed in the previous uh, slide. The soil resilience refers to the ability of soil to resist or recover from anthropogenic or natural perturbation. This ability to recover, it's a kind of ability which in general you cannot see. And so that's why I mentioned in the start that what we will discuss that covers all, which we have talked about in the previous lectures about soil quality management. So this is the kind of ability, the inner ability, which may not be shown exactly uh, because it is a combination of a lot of things. Uh, for example, if we say that that person is uh, very smart. So the smart doesn't exist exactly this, but exactly that is. The smart has a lot of, uh, uh, characteristics in it uh, depending on the health, uh, intelligence, the genius, uh, the aptitude, uh, IQ level, the body uh, structure, then the handsome uh, uh, handsomeness, and there are a lot of characteristics which are so basically soil resilience uh, covers a lot of characteristics of soil uh, to to. Uh, provide a sustainable soil, exact, uh, which is more uh, resistant or which is more adapted to the climatic conditions, the changes in the climatic conditions, etc. Most soil do not offer resistance to the perturbation because, uh, especially the agriculture lands, uh, so we are using it for our purpose, uh, but are able to recover. And if the soil, for example, if we're using the soil for one year, so so when we are cultivating, we are cutting the soil, we are uh, changing the structures, so we are adding the fertilizers, so we may add the biofertilizers, uh, we may, may spray the soil, uh, so we are uh, deteriorating the biota in the soil. Uh, so when it has the ability to recover, because we have to use the soil for our agriculture purpose. Uh, to provide food uh, to uh, and f food for animals and humans, and of course for uh, many other purposes like the uh, the 
landfills like uh, the uh, elimination of the uh, what you say the pollutants and, and so there are a lot of uses for that and if the soil has ability to recover so it is resilient the extent and the rate of recovery are higher for a resilient soil uh, as the soil is more resilient there will be more recovery the rate of recovery will be more so resilient soils have high elasticity and amplitude so there the range is wide uh, from one point to the other the resilience the uh, wideness of resilience uh, so there are two threshold levels we will see in the perhaps in the next slide and then low malleability so as i described when it come back toward the original state so it is very different from the exact original state so we know that the soil is a complex material so we don't expect that the 100% it will come to uh, the original state so it may come even in, in some cases its ability may uh, be enhanced even uh, but but still uh, uh, in reality you cannot expect that it will be recovered 100% uh, so so that difference is basically malleability which we have already described some resilient soils may also be hysteric because of inherent soil properties that influence the recovery path. So the hysteresis, we have already talked about that. So soil resilience of soil that has also a class, a class is, it is not that we have just said that this is a resilient soil and this is not resilient. So there are a lot of uh, uh, classes for example there are high resilient soils uh, which has rapid recovery and they have a high buffering capacity uh, so to absorb the the changes the chemical changes in the soil to adapt very quickly uh, there are resilient resilient recovery with improved management if you have some uh, management practices and you the, the recovery is uh, even in, uh, if, uh, improved and this may be near to the rapid uh, recovery uh, then the moderately resilient uh, mean the recovery is slow with high input you have to use a lot of uh, um, management practices and input for example you may have to add the uh, organic matters in the soils and other amendments slightly resilient uh, slow recovery even with change in land use uh, even if you add the amendments and the other uh, you change uh, the, you, you use the different uh, crop rotation managements and other so even then the recovery is uh, very slow and then the <clears throat> non-resilient no recovery even with change in land use so it means that that soil has been uh, destructed and that don't have ability to to recover uh, we can uh, see here th that there are maybe two thresholds that up till now, uh, up till this point, so they may have a resistance. Resistance. So it means that they are not, their properties, they are not changing. And the second threshold, that is resilience between first uh, threshold first and threshold two. So that is basically the potential of the resilience. Uh, this is the effective. Uh, maximum ecolo ecological potential and if we go beyond that uh, threshold level so that is regime shift the term is used it means you now the recovery is not at its full potential so maybe if if we have this stage from threshold one to threshold two uh, so it means uh, so the soil may recover 100 percently or near to 100 percent but if go beyond that it means the soil will not come to their antecedent or original state so malleability will be more so if you go beyond that then uh, that will be uh, uh, that will even enhance the malleability so it means the soils have resilience uh, but they have also uh, a threshold level for each, if if someone is very smart so that may also have some threshold levels so that to adapt the things if someone is strong uh, so that can uh, tolerate uh, 40 degree centigrade temperature 45 50 but may not be 51 
So these are basically the threshold levels. So how can we simply describe the resilience? So, uh, we can see that there are soil characteristics, soil properties, uh, original soil properties. Uh, and then we have a soil biota in that. Uh, so that is basically a very important point uh, to improve the soil health, which basically make the soil resilient. Uh, because uh, the organic matter and the soil biota, so they are mainly responsible. Soil health, if you say soil health, is, it means that is something living. So what is living in the soil? So that is the biota. Uh, so basically, if you have uh, this uh, level of F1 function, for example, uh, the, uh, then F2, the soil biota will enhance the functionality. And if you use again further uh, that soil, so that will have, uh, if you enhance the pressure on the soil, so that will decrease the level. So if you have a F6, the, then the soil biota will again uh, recover it to the original soil properties, the antecedent uh, state of the soil or status of the soil. So that is a very simple uh, description of soil resilience that, so there are changes and in changes this capacity of soil functionality so that is also changed. And then that soil uh, which has already been processed through difference so that can come to again the original state. So these are different various functions, uh, F1 to F3, 4, 5, 6. So, so when we are taking these functions from the soil, the, the ability of soil is lost, and then that ability can be regained or recover, we say recovery. So that is the soil biota, which is responsible for that. So we have a different uh, aspects to, to just see, or uh, to just evaluate the resilience. Uh, the first one that is the indicators, uh, then we have some processes, then the factors, then the causes, and then there is uh, soil resilience and soil quality management. So we will uh, uh, have uh, one slide for each and we will describe that uh, how these are responsible. Uh, indicators, so there are a degradative process uh, which basically affect the soil characteristics. And uh, these are erosion, soil organic carbon depletion, acidification in some soil, alkalinization maybe in other way, nutrient depletion and compaction. So these are the basic degraded, degradative process. Uh, which can affect the soil characteristics. So, so there are a, a degradation uh, indicators. So, so we have might have already discussed in the previous uh, uh, slides. For example, the erosivity, uh, erosivity uh, the erosion uh, of the the ability, or you you say the um, extent of erosion in the soil then the top soil is lost when the soil is degraded and eroded. Uh, depletion, the nutrients, so they are depletion. Uh, and uh, there are many soil uh, uh, particles which are depleted. The pH is changed. There is a leaching of different chemicals. Uh, uh, CAC is even decreased. Uh, if you have a high pH, then the CAC is generally decreased. So then decline nutrient reserves compaction and crusting. So these are the degradation in response to all these processes. So these are basically indicators for soil degradation. But we have to talk about the indicators of soil resilience. Uh, structure resilience, uh, the, how the soil can maintain its structure. Soil renewal rate, how it's renewed, uh, how uh, immediately it renewed. Uh, buffering capacity, nutrient cycling, that the soil has uh, some reserves and the nutrient they are cycling within the soil. Uh, biological nitrogen fixation, self mulching. Uh, if the soil is uh, producing a lot of biomass, it's also self mulching. Uh, then we have a uh, soil biodiversity. So these are basically indicators uh, 
uh, of the soil resiliency. If the soil has uh, these in a positive way, so it means that soil is more resi uh, resilient. And they have a resilience uh, against all these degradative processes. So then we have process of soil resilience uh, that how the, the soil achieve the resilience. Uh, for example, the formation, the originally how the soil is formed, the weathering, the soil aggregation, the, the aggregate formation, and the uh, reservoir of the soil organic uh, carbon. Uh, then uh, we have a nutrient cycling, biological nitrogen fixation, nutrient transformation, and leaching. So these all are, if the, the soil has a, a lot of leaching losses, so it means that it's not much resilient. Uh, so leaching should be reduced, and the soil must uh, have ability to transform and to keep the nutrient in the soil. So the soil must have a microbial population to to enhance the nitrogen from uh, atmosphere or to fix the nitrogen from atmosphere uh, then the succession uh, that that is also a kind of uh, property or a process of resilience so whatever they, they are uh, the population dynamics in that soil the microbial population dynamics and the, the interaction, the community interaction uh, of different microbial population in that. So that is basically succession from one generation to the others. Uh, so if we, we are using soil for a certain period of time, so what will get it in the end, in, in the sense of microbial population and community interaction. So then we have effectors of soil resilience. Uh, we have a soil quality which affect the resilience, uh, inherent properties, of course, and parent properties, parent material as well. Uh, then we have a terrain, uh, slope of the soil. So that is basically very important because if you have a very high slope, so that will, uh, will be very prone to soil erosion. So drainage, uh, the whole the drain is uh, 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 going to, uh, the, how the water is drained from that soil. Uh, precipitation, that affect the soil resilience, the snowfall or the rainfall. Uh, water balance in the soil, the, how the, the moisture is preserved and how much moisture is preserved in the soil. Uh, radiation, uh, the sunlight radiation, so they affect the, the temperature of that environment. So that affect the resilience. Uh, then, of course, the vegetation, uh, the my, uh, the organic uh, part of the soil and the soil biodiversity, the microbial population in the soil. So they uh, affect the uh, soil resilience. So biodiversity, when we talk about the vegetation, of the, so we, uh, because we are talking about the soil as a whole, uh, that may be a natural ecosystem. In natural ecosystem, the vegetation is very important. That how, what kind of vegetation is there? Uh, how it's uh, uh, self-mulching. Uh, so, so that is basically affecting the uh, soil resilience. Uh, then we have the causes uh, of soil resilience. So sometimes uh, the people, they confuse between the causes and the factors. So, so they are bit tricky. Uh, the factors are very generalized uh, factors, experimentally you can say, experimentally that can be uh, uh, evaluated. But in the cause is basically the, the depth of uh, the, the sense which regulate the resilience. Uh, for example, land use and management. So they, it has a lot of things uh, in it and you cannot uh, quantify. For example, silviculture, pasture, arable land, the, the, the silvicultures, that is a tree production, pasture production, the crop production, management, uh, the natural ecosystem, if we talk about the terrestrial land and the forest land, urban land use. So that also, uh, the trafficking and such kind of things, the, uh, the pollution, uh, polluted water in the soil, so they all they come in the urban land use. So that 
are the, the causes of the resilience, uh, to enhance the resilience or to reduce the resilience. Uh, then the socioeconomic factors, so they are very important. So generally, they, they cannot be evaluated much uh, in the experimental way. So land rights, if the, you have an owner of the land and if you have a, a renter of the land, so, so the, the, both will affect the uh, resilience of the soil uh, because the uh, use of the soil, so that is different. The institutional support, uh, if uh, your government is supporting or uh, there are other uh, organizations which are supporting uh, the the people, so they, they will affect the resilience. Income, uh, education of the people, it's a gender, if if uh, you have more manpower, the more men are generally they are stronger, so they can have uh, more impact on the soil quality and resilience, and uh, uh, the natural ability of the, the both genders are different. It doesn't mean that one is superior or inferior, but the both gender have different abilities to uh, to work on the field. So, so there will be effect of that as well. Uh, then the sensitivities, uh, political effect uh, causes uh, sensitivities. Uh, when there is uh, any, uh, for example, the conflicts and uh, such kind of things, or the the government is uh, sometimes is sensitive to the uh, land use, but sometimes they are not sensitive. Uh, then we have incentives which the government is giving to the farmers, and then. The, that is also a kind of the economic support, the policies, what kind of policies government and the, what kind of the legislation has uh, to, to preserve the soil and to make it, make it more sustainable. Uh, then we have you know, the resilience and the quality management that well, how can we, uh, the resilience affect the quality management. So, so, uh, if we have a appropriate land use and scientific management, so generally we have increased resilience and restoration. And, and, and if we have inappropriate, uh, so then uh, we have generally decreased resilience and more degradation. Uh, uh, the, what are the factors basically which affect uh, on the, these are the inherent soil properties, the climate, water balance, biodiversity, terrain. So if they are positively affecting, so they will alleviate the soil aspect of specific constraints, uh, which are basically against the, uh, or which are, which limits the crop production or the land use. Reduction of ecological stresses. The stresses, the, the climate and the water balance, so they are reducing the stresses reduce. It is the positive effect. Increase in biomass production and improve soil quality and fertility. So it, it, if these are in, in the negative side, that the soil has a, a accentuation of soil constraints, uh, so it's, uh, uh, enhancement of toward the negativity, exhibition of uh, exacerbation, exacerbation of uh, ecological stress. Uh, so they are increasing and worsening the ecological stresses, uh, decreases in biomass and decrease in soil fertility. So they are the negativity. So these are basically the soil resilient factors which are, if they are toward the positive side, so they will enhance the quality. And if they are toward the negative side, so they will, of course, decrease the resilience and quality uh, of the soil. So this is one example only, uh, just to highlight that uh, different management strategies may have uh, different kind of effects on the resilience. And it will also give us a picture that what is actually resilience. So this shows the nitrogen only, and uh, uh, this shows the NPK, and this shows the straw plus NPK, and this shows show the manure plus NPK. So if you just imagine, so the, this black, it's part uh, cause black parts so that is this control basically. So it means uh, no fertilizer is used. And uh, 
the the gray that is increment by fertilization by nitrogen npk snpk mnpk so if you just observe here that uh, the the soils can having organic matter so they have a relatively higher uh, what you say the sustainability you can see here uh, so there is a different so you may not uh, see the, the lot of difference uh, because uh, uh, this is a very realistic uh, uh, study which is based on but you have you can if you just uh, observe it keenly uh, you can uh, see here that the soil with the npk or n they have relatively less uh, sustainability so basically the uh, the both they they contribute to the sustainability the originally for example if you don't apply the fertilizer or any amendment so what is the response of the soil towards the yield and if you add that so how much increase is there so the both shows the resilience uh, of the soil you can see here that from 1992 so there is a bit increase but if you see here so there is no increase so there are uh, increase uh, but uh, there are fluctuation in this you can see in the end there is an increase uh, but again there are some bad patches which are not here in case of straw or in case of money so uh, they it means the resilience is ultimately increased if you add uh, organic matter in the soil so summing up uh, the soil resilience assessment there is some quantitative observation and qualitative uh, quantitative rate of soil degradation rate of soil restoration there are a lot of um, modeling uh, which uh, covers the renewal rate capacity to withstand the stresses so so uh, these can be quantified and uh, then there are also qualitative soil properties ground cover biomass water balance so these can be uh, seen and observed because you don't have any pet thing which uh, can be uh, quantified but uh, so there are there is a combination of various soil characteristics so finally the sources and sinks for carbon that is uh, the the outcome of the resilient soils are the resilient activities environmental regulatory function the soil is doing that if the soil is resilient sustainable development of the soil uh, are the for the agriculture then the soil restoration that the soil has can easily be restored if it's disturbed and it is very important and it is getting more important if we talk about the united nations sustainable development goals so the soil resilience has a lot with many of the these goals climate change the hunger the food security so in all these is the sustainability of soil that is involved so that was all about today's lecture so thank you very much